Well, moving into year four, let's check out our roster, see how things are looking. We're an 85 overall, one overall less than we were last year. It looks like I didn't check, but Justin Jefferson got a superstar after last season, which is really nice. He has surpassed Adam Thielen on the depth chart. Interesting. I kind of thought Thielen might regress a little bit more than he did, but hopefully our rookies former rookies get some good opportunity to really showcase their skills and develop well. Our offensive line is still intact. Hopefully Brian O'Neill can kind of figure out whatever's going on for him. We did draft the center as a backup. This should be Bradbury's last year on his contract. So if we lose him, we have him as an option or if we choose to move Bradbury elsewhere, I think he played tackle of some sort or guard at least in college. He wouldn't be too bad of an option. I don't think to a good candidate to make a change, but Kyle Rudolph regressed quite a bit. Irv Smith still up there in 83. Offense is pretty much the exact same as last year. Same as defense. The only big notable difference would be without Michael Pierce, which is a big hole. Hopefully in some capacity, this helps. I, I'm just going to believe that because my defensive tackles were doing so well, it made my ends not do well. That sounds pretty foolish, but it's what we're going to go with. Going to be looking to replace Clinton Dix after this year and... Hendrix is still not an X factor after all these good years. They just, it's not in the code for him to be an X factor, I guess, but he's regressing bars regressing defense is starting to lose its tenacity. I'm afraid last year might've been our one big chance for the defense. I want to make it to the Super Bowl. It's year four. We were right there last year. We need something to help us get over the hump. We will go ahead, advance to midseason, see how the team's doing, and then see how this year shapes out. Year four. Here we go. So we're on by week nine. We missed the trade deadline because I forgot to hit the B button. Uh, week eight, we won 21 to 10, which is good. We're sitting at six and two, which is right where we were at last year. Six and one. We got a sizable lead over our division doing well, like where we're at. Let's go ahead and take a look at everybody's stats on the our quarterback, Mike Watkins, 16, almost 1700 yards, 18 touchdowns, five picks, still been sacked 19 times. Not good. Would like to see more yards yards, but from a touchdown, especially touchdown to interception ratio standpoint, we're doing well. Dalvin Cook already at 750 yards halfway through the season. What a monster year. Three touchdowns, doing well. The rookie we picked up, Zaire Walker, is actually getting some touches too. Three touchdowns. So we got a healthy touchdown split between everybody. Looks like Kyle Rudolph even ran for a touchdown. That's impressive. Justin Jefferson continuing his domination. 31 catches, 510 yards, three touchdowns. On his way to another 1,000-yard season would be nice. Julian Hill making a name for himself. 342 yards, three touchdowns. Phelan still hanging around, doing all right. 30 catches. 300 yards, three touchdowns. Irv Smith with four touchdowns. And poor Zach Palmer kind of still buried on the depth chart. Blocking Brian O'Neill. Yes. We might need a new right tackle for the last year if there's anybody on free agency because he's just. Oh, he's killing us. Anthony Barr leading the team in tackles. Probably the first time this rebuild that I can remember. But Eric Kendricks with 46 tackles, five TFLs, two sacks, three INTs. Still pissed off that he doesn't have an X factor yet. I am too. I don't blame him. Some BS right there. Mike Hughes coming back on his new contract. 44 tackles, four INTs halfway through the year. The dude is killing it. Absolutely killing it. Holton Hill, 42 tackles, no INTs. Jair Alexander also zero INTs. We're just going to keep telling our Yourself, it's because nobody's throwing to him. Good news is between our linebacker and Mike Hughes, Eric Kendricks and Mike Hughes, our defense is forcing some turnovers. Sacks on the year. Daniil Hunter is at four and a half. Bobby Samuels not really suffering much production loss with the loss of Michael Pierce. And Gilbert Bulware is stepping up in his replace, picking up three and a half of his own. Yannick with two and a half. Eric Kendricks with two. Defensive tackle that we ended up signing. Thad Winter also has two. So the interior is getting a lot of sacks. I mean, that's been the theme through the whole thing. They've been just carrying this defensive line, which is really nice to see. I'm happy with where we're at. A couple things I wish we could shore up. We're just going to, I guess, let our quarterback keep getting hit. It's already past the trade deadline. Let's see who wants to come back next year. And there it is is Daniil Hunter wants to come back and get paid over $10 million per year. We've got a lot of cap room because we're going to have to make a lot of decisions. And this one's a big one. Every other franchise I would do, a 28-year-old X-Factor, especially pass rusher, I would not let him go. This guy has just been... 
terrible. In all honesty, we'll probably re-sign him. Let's take a look at who else needs a contract. Eric Kendricks has been doing well with us. Unfortunately for him, though, he's on the wrong side of 30. He is regressing each year down from an, what was a 90 two years ago to an 86. He can't get that X factor, which if he did, his regression would be just much less than it is now, which would be nice. I think we're going to need a new middle linebacker for next year. Garrett Bradbury, 100% bring him back. He's been solid for us. Contract length works. We'll get you your money. That's fine. Brian O'Neill, I have no words for you, my guy. You're not doing too hot. Now, I know I said that Kendricks was on the wrong side of 30, being 31, and Barr is also 31, but Barr has the X factor, really helps counter regression. So I'd be more willing to give him a contract than Kendricks right now. Since we only have one year left after this, we'll see what happens. Kyle Rudolph, I appreciate everything you've done for the Vikings organization. See you on your way out. Same with HaHa Clinton Dix. Pat Elfline, I'll be happy to re-sign you for another couple of years. Without a question, you've been super solid for us. Thad Winter, two years, $4 million basically. He wants more bonus money. We're good at defensive tackle. So saying no just cost you a job. Sorry about you, bud. Outside of them, though, everybody else will be gone. Anthony Barr. Let's go ahead and re-sign Daniil. He wants more money, even though he hasn't done shit. That's <sighs> everybody wants more money. If Anthony Barr says yes, good. All right, so we got our X Factor back. We got our left guard back. We'll come back for our defensive end, at least. Kendricks, again, I'm not too worried about if we lose out on him. He's been a just outstanding player for us. I'm not going to want to overpay him a ton. I accidentally pressed Sim to next week. Well, let's go back to the table, I guess, with these guys. So we got Daniil Hunter back, up the bonus and everything a little bit. He's been terrible for us, but to try and keep it as realistic as possible, nobody's going to let Daniil Hunter leave. It is what it is. Uh, Eric Kendricks wants to come back. Since we're about to go into the last year, uh, he doesn't want to come back. We might put a franchise tag on him. Bradbury, I guess we should have probably started with first. Bump him up a little bit. Give him more money than he probably needs just to keep him around. And then... From there, we're good. So now we will actually go ahead and sim to the playoffs. We are six and two. Hopefully we can lock up another playoff spot, make a deep run and get to the Super Bowl. Really? We didn't make the playoffs. We went nine and seven after losing, ironically enough, nine to seven against our division rival Packers and didn't make the playoffs. Oh, my Lord. One year out of four, one for three, four on getting to the playoffs. So that means year five, Super Bowl or bust. What went wrong? Passing yards, 3,400 yards for Watkins, 29 touchdowns, nine picks. Got a good ratio, needs more touchdown production. Got sacked 38 times. Dalvin Cook was just frustrated because he's balling and the team can't go anywhere. The whole run game was actually balling. 20 touchdowns between them. So that's one great year. Cook with almost 1,400 yards. Justin Jefferson, again, over 1,000 yards, eight touchdowns. He did well. Thielen kind of had a bit of a resurgence. 75 catches, 844 yards, five touchdowns. I'll take that. The rest of the team kind of average. Our two tackles, again, just absolute revolving doors. I can't find one in the draft that's any good. I guess I just need to start paying some in free agency like McGlinchey, but <sighs> Kendricks walked away from us with 106 tackles, 7 TFLs, 2 sacks, 3 picks, 7 deflections, no fumbles. What an absolute monster. Anthony Barr, who we did resign, 93 tackles, 6 TFLs, 2.5 sacks, no INTs, 5 deflections, still a good year. Mike Hughes with 92 tackles, 2 TFLs, and 6 picks, 2 deflections. Did he get a touchdown? No pick 6s out of all that. That is nuts. That's honestly one of the most interceptions I've seen in a sim before. Jair Alexander zero <laughs> kind of been a little bit of a waste of money and definitely not living up to the billing, but oh well sack wise nine from Daniil Hunter. So he finally broke six. That's great. Wish that was more like a 19, but uh, cause if you put it in perspective here, let's, let's go to Nick Bosa had 18 and a half. That's good. Oh, look at that. Joey Bosa had 14. So apparently it's just us. Miles Garrett, 13, 12 and a half for Josh Allen, 12 for Cleo Mack. Those are like good, realistic numbers, not fucking six that we've been getting. So I'm, I'm still pissed. I will be mad for a long time. 
but whatever. Seven and a half from Bobby Samuels, still killing it from our original draft class. What an absolute stud. Yannick with six and a half. Bullware coming in, replacing Michael Pierce with five and a half. Good year all around. Check the INTs. We forced 10 and six of them went to Mike Hughes, which is good. The personnel as a whole, I would have liked to see that more spread out to know that our players as a whole are doing better, but we're forcing turnovers. I can't really complain. So, God, I can't believe we missed out on the playoffs. Sim to the Super Bowl. So looking at yearly awards, Baker Mayfield wins MVP. Carson Wentz is on there. Herbert, we're nowhere to be found. Tua's on there. That's good to see. Coach of the year, nothing. Check the NFC Offensive Player of the Year. Nobody. Josh Rosen again makes the list somehow at a loss. Eric Kendricks and Mike Hughes both on Defensive Player of the Year. Nobody won. Zaire Walker came in third for Offensive Rookie of the Year, which is pretty good considering he wasn't the starting running back. Defensive Rookie of the Year, nobody. Best quarterback. We're not even on the list. Best running back. Dalvin Cook's there. Wide receiver. About to say Justin Jefferson is there lower than I would imagine. Offensive line, nobody. Defensive line, <sighs> linebackers, Eric Kendricks. Mike Hughes won best defensive back. Hopefully, we can see a superstar dev out of him. That would be nice. And our kicker, Jake Elliott, new kicker, made best kicker list. So made a good pick there. Super Bowl 57 between the New York Jets, LA Rams. Interesting. We have no poll there. Let's go ahead and sim to next week. Get ready for the draft entering year five. LA Rams are your Super Bowl 57 champions. Very interesting. And of course, now Eric Kendricks gets his freaking X Factor. We're franchise tagging him. That's a good use of it. Down to an 82. So this is the last year. He's really hit hit the low point, but we're going to do it. X Factor finally got it. Hopefully we can reward him with a Super Bowl run. He's been nothing short of stellar for us. Let's hope that the Sim stats keep up and going into free agency and the draft. We need a right tackle. We need not a defensive tackle, though. Chris Jones would be pretty nice. We could really use a left tackle, honestly. So free agency week one, we're going hard after Tyron Smith to help shore up the left tackle spot. Hopefully we get him. That would be a huge upgrade to help keep our good quarterback on his feet rather than on his backside. Put in an offer for Terrell Burgess, 25 years old, good free safety. Definitely an upgrade over Clinton Dix, who was regressing. Bring in Taylor Lewan. Worst case scenario, if Tyron Smith says no, Lewan can come in and play left tackle for us. But the idea is both of them say yes, and we can move Lewan to right tackle. Should be better than Brian O'Neill for sure. And then Von Mayo was one of our guys that we drafted in the first or second draft we did defense tackle wise. That was really good for us. Solid depth. So we're going to bring him back. I didn't see him get away from us. It's the last season. It would have been fun to make an offer for Chris Jones, but it's just not in the cards for us. So let's see. Tyron Smith said no again. Oh, shit. Our free safety got away. We got Taylor Lewan, so we have a tackle, which is good. Let's go back and see if there's any free agents available for us. J.K. Dobbins is available. Free safety. Nobody really good here. Julian Blackman's kind of interesting. Maybe just because I'm a Colts fan. Not as good as Haha ha was. Man, that sucks. I would have liked to get gotten that free safety. What about A.J. Terrell? Tyron went to the Eagles. Paid him a bunch of money. Fifth year option, Bobby Samuels, even though this is the last season, absolutely. The dude was a beast. We would want to keep him in any way possible going into the future. Dude's going to would get paid next season a lot. I think it's incredible that the guy still has normal development. We're going to go ahead and just go into the draft. We still don't have a bona fide free safety by any means. Left tackles kind of short up, but right tackle is not good. We need quite a bit. So make some moves on the offensive line move some people around quarterback still normal development there we go Bobby finally went up to his uh, star so I was just complaining about during his fifth year option how he was still normal finally 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 went up to a star during Super Bowl week well deserved wish it would have came sooner but dude is a stud. And then we got our two X-Factor linebackers. We got Tremaine Edmonds trying to play both safeties because he's just that good. So we will go ahead and see what we can get in the draft. And I will see you on the other side. So draft recap going into our final season here. Travis Spain was our first pick. Free safety, 73 overall. Should start right away. Nothing great. Everybody's normal development per usual. Just solid draft. Final draft. I don't really know what to say anymore. 
I just think, again, I'm kind of beating a dead horse, but I just think Madden's kind of broken. Like, I went and looked at the recap for all the teams, and the first few teams did get hidden developments. But, like, for the perfect example was the first draft whenever I drafted, drafted the defensive tackle, who was the number one player in the draft that had normal development. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't quite add up. I don't like it. But I'm not going to sit here and complain anymore because that doesn't really do anything to help us. So looking at the team before we advance the regular season, Taylor Lewan at left tackle, Holcomb at right tackle. I'm not sure if that's going to be an improvement at all. I would have loved to get Tyran, Tyrone Smith, but we weren't able to. So we could start Spain right there. I think we're going to see how it goes. Let's let's move Holton Hill up there. Let's see what his stats look like real quick. I think he'd be pretty good for us up there. He's getting kind of buried at cornerback. So we'll move Jeff Gladney up and then move him down. And that'll make me feel a little bit more comfortable because it is Super Bowl or bust. So we got to kind of field the best team we can. He's our slot corner. We're going to move that to Gladney, I think. Well, no, we can leave Hill as the slot corner and then just play our rookie. It'll be fine. Whatever happens, happens. So that's the team. Super Bowl or bust, year five. Big goal, make it to the Super Bowl, year five. Super Bowl or bust. I don't know how I feel about this roster. I think I can say overall, this rebuild felt better than the Chargers. Obviously, we had a much better playoff run. I feel like we made some better decisions overall. We got out of Kirk Cousins' contract, moved into a solid rookie that I wish was just developing better. What is a real-life 2020 rookie, Justin Jefferson, developed quite nicely, took over wide receiver one, superstar dev, doing well. We kept most of the offensive line intact. Um, Our tackles were very lackluster, to say the least. We developed our in house talent they are regressing because they are older we drafted a stud we drafted several studs on the defensive tackle position to be specific brought in a couple of free agent splashes but i think all things considered this team's really disappointed and if you're a vikings fan watching this i really hope that daniel hunter and yannick and gakwe do better than whatever the hell is happening in this rebuild year five baby here it is let's go ahead and send a mid-season we're one and five. Holy fuck. So I think we're we're kinda kinda out of here. I think I think it's over. Bobby Samuels is going for the superstar. I wish him nothing but the best. Hopefully he gets it. Let's check the stats. Quarterback, fifteen hundred yards, nine touchdowns, five picks, seventeen sacks. Basically the same thing that's been happening. Dalvin Cook's Almost nowhere to be found. Only 300 rushing yards, no touchdowns. A bit disappointing, really disappointing. Irv Smith's our leading receiver. Justin Jefferson just behind him. Thielen, Julian Hill, and Dalvin Cook. I'm sure our two tackles are giving up. It's not as bad as last year, but the line as a whole is giving up more ta- or more sacks. Barr, Hughes, Kendrick's all doing well. Sacks, Daniil's got three. Yannick's got three. Bobby has one. INTs, Mike's, Mike Hughes has two, Yannick one, Jair finally has a pick, that's good, and Terrell Edmonds has one, so I, it just seems like offensive production is a bit lackluster this year, I'm being honest, I kind of think we are out of it, let's just sim to the playoffs. And that's that. That's the Minnesota Vikings rebuild. We did not make the playoffs. We had the worst season by far, 4-12. and Apparently, Brian O'Neill was the glue holding this team together, this fractured, fractured team. Let's take a look at the stats and then call it a rebuild. We finished at an 87 overall, 87 offense, 88 defense. So we didn't go up as exponentially fast as we did with the Chargers, but we still did pretty well. Quarterback. Threw for just shy of 4,000 yards. It's, I think, probably the highest he's had or right around. 31 touchdowns, but the 19 picks was a big, big yikes from him this year. Never really seen him with that many picks, so that sucks. Uh, Sacked 35 times. Dalvin Cook didn't break 1,000 yards. Only had two touchdowns. Poor year for him. Justin Jefferson turned in his 1,100 yards on 74 catches, 10 touchdowns. He continues to... Be one of the best receivers in the league. Give him props all throughout the rebuild. Adam Thielen hung in there. The touchdowns are down this year, but he did really well. All things considered, being an old man and such, I didn't want to move on from him because he just kept producing. So we'll take it. Irv Smith, 645 yards, six touchdowns. Julian Hill, four touchdowns. 
And that's that. Let's see the final sack numbers. Down. They're down. They played better, um, I would say, but not good. Eric Kendricks fighting through all the regression. Finally got his X Factor. Still coming out with 115 tackles. Two TFLs, one sack, two INTs, four deflections, no fumbles. This dude has been solid throughout the entire rebuild. Mike Hughes has been great coming in with 108 tackles, three TFLs, no sacks, three interceptions, five deflections, and a forced fumble. The addition of Jair Alexander really helped him take the next step. That's pretty dope even though Jair did not do much for us. So we had four people over 100 tackles. So Anthony Barr also and Holton Hill with also 10 TFLs. That's good. One INT for Holton and pass deflections. Did well. Jair finished with two INTs, two TFLs, 89 tackles. So not bad. Sacks, we'll go ahead and take a look. Daniil led the way with eight and a half. Bobby Samuels with five and a half. Yannick with five. Bullware with three and some ones and then half a sack. So biggest disappointment, is, biggest takeaway, I guess, is Daniil Hunter, Yannick and Gakwe can't coexist in Madden simulations. Doesn't make sense to me. I guess that's what happens whenever you have two really good pass rushers, but I still expected to see like eight or nine sacks per year out of both of them. Very disappointing, but I would consider this a rebuild. We did better than the Chargers for sure, at least as far as the way we maneuvered the roster. Getting out from underneath of Kirk Cousins' contract was huge early on. The trade for Harrison Smith was also pretty big in the long run. The draft pick, we got back for it. You know, it's only the second rebuild we've done. This team should have definitely made one Super Bowl, in my opinion. But what are you going to do? Um, So wrapping things up, I appreciate you stopping by. Thank you for all of you who have been checking out the videos, leaving likes, comments, subscribing, things like that. If you haven't already, be sure and subscribe to the video. Turn on the notifications. That way you get notified when my videos go live. If you also want to check me out on Twitch, right there at Colossal Tugboat. Drop me a follow. Follow me on all the social media links below. If you want to try some raise energies, I got some great suggestions for you. Use code Colossal Tugboat at checkout online, or if you just want to try a flavor or two, take my advice. I will give you any suggestion on flavor, and you can most likely find it at GNC or Vitamin Shop. But once you do find that one flavor you like, buy some cases. Use my code at checkout. Save yourself money. Help support me. That'd be greatly appreciated. Again, leave comments. Let me know who you want to see next. Until next time, I'll see you guys. Thanks for everything. Peace out. Love y'all.